founding president of the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine, and created a unified platform where medicine is practiced in an integrative way. I truly can't wait to hear her talk, Creating Health, Enhancing Immunity, A Global Perspective. Thank you so much, Suzanne, and I'm so glad you got to speak. Now, if I can get my screen to share, we'll be going really well. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> anyway, so I'm honored to be able to talk about integrative medicine and the path I've taken, which like Suzanne has been one from being a fixer, one from mechanical fixes like coronary stents and things of that nature. And I spent many years of my life doing that. And in the 90s, with uh, doing research with Dean Ornish was where, where I had my first opening and awareness of uh, what really matters to health. And it's not just about having a stent place, but it's about how you live your life and the people you live your life with and the way you respond to stress and tension. So I became acutely aware that Western medicine was great in uh, acute care, but in chronic disease and disease prevention, uh, Western medicine was less than desirable. Uh, what we learned from the Ornish research in the 90s was that 91% of chest pain went away through lifestyle change, which included yoga and meditation and vegetarian diet and exercise and so on. And so that sent me on a journey to really understand how to bring about practices into uh, my practice uh, that made a difference in transforming people's health. So my own mission became uh, healing people and changing lives through science and compassion. Uh, and that's why I love Robert's work in meditation so much because it gives us the science. I decided to take a global perspective today because I think it's important for us to talk about uh, what the Lancet identified over nine years ago now, which is the whole connection between human health and planetary health, uh, with climate change being the greatest uh, threat to the 21st century, but also our greatest opportunity. And as a clinician, even sitting here uh, in La Jolla, uh, I've had to face the fact that uh, things like air pollution, which claims 7 million lives a year, and um, new infections like chikungunya and West Nile virus and so on. And now of course, COVID-19, things we would never thought we would see in our backyard, uh, fires and floods and storms, 100 year storms that are occurring monthly are having a profound effect on people, both emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, and as clinicians in the office, we have come to realize that the health of humans and the health of planet are not uh, cannot be separated. And to that end, I'm happy to say that uh, following a Vatican meeting that we conducted in 2017, that we published a book called Our Planet, Our, Pe Our Responsibility, Healthy People, Healthy Planet, Our Responsibility. From a cardiovascular perspective, we know that, uh, for example, heavy metals lead to cardiovascular disease. We know that we have changed our food supply with KFOSs and animals that uh, have steroids and antibiotics. And uh, the list is endless in what, in what we have done. Um, and what's really important here to me is that if we don't change our level of consciousness, if we don't think globally, uh, we're never going to um, impact any of this. And my sad reality is I believe that uh, the planet will remain. Uh, I'm deeply concerned about the health of humans. Uh, many people may be aware of uh, things like uh, the small island of Tuvalu uh, going underwater so many times that they have a, a deal with New Zealand to take all of their residents, that children attending school in Bangladesh uh, have to do so on houseboats, on little boats, because they've been flooded so many times, they don't rebuild the schools. And so it's kind of sad to me that we spend a lot of time uh, talking about things that I think are much less significant, uh, which is why I'm honored to be part of this webinar. So when you think about chronic disease, you know, in Western medicine, we say, oh, take a cholesterol pill, take a beta blocker. 
Well, the issue is so much greater than that, right? It's, uh, and everyone knows this, it's the planet's health, it's our macro micronutrition, it's our food, our exposure to toxins and so on. So when we talk about immunity, right? How do we have healthy immune systems if we don't have healthy people to begin with? And how do we have healthy immune systems if we don't have a healthy planet? Uh, another interesting area of research to me has been the work by Elizabeth Blackwell, Nobel Prize winner, uh, who studied mindfulness in many of her research projects. But even the concept of telomeres and telomerase uh, being shortened in people who experience racism uh, point to uh, some of the deep, deep wounds that we have within our society uh, that we need to fix. Uh, we also know there's tremendous research that, for example, ice, social isolation is worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. The importance of connection, uh, it's more harmful than not exercising. Social isolation is more harmful than being obese. So uh, again, when we talk about healthy people and immunity, uh, we have to factor in each and every one of these components. So I'm a firm believer that we need to move away from the way uh, we were taught in uh, medical school, from the ill to the pill, you give me your ill and I give you my pill uh, model of medicine to really a more ecological model of medicine, a model of medicine that uh, recognizes that uh, the planet is also our client or our patient and that uh, healing the planet is equally our responsibility as is healing our patients. And if you look at what we are currently doing, uh, in my opinion, it's madness. Uh, so, so for example, if we subsidize and we do the dairy industry, if we subsidize the agricultural industry and we make uh, bad food cheap, right? And we, we allow high fructose corn syrup to go into everything and people are getting sick from the food, right? And the agricultural industry is increasing greenhouse gas emissions. So what we're subsidizing is making us sick in many ways. And then we say, well, let's go on to the pharmaceutical and the hospital system and let's have them fix us up. Well, what many people don't realize is the hospital system has one of the largest climate footprints uh, as well. So when you put the whole thing together, you say, you know, we're subsidizing uh, things that make us ill. And the solution, the poly pill, the ill to the pill uh, is all we have on the table right now. And it's only the people uh, within our communities, integrative medicine, functional medicine, holistic medicine, that really uh, are going to make a difference here because the old system is breaking, it's collapsing. It's collapsing before us right now, uh, even under COVID-19. So uh, we have this big tsunami and the tsunami is, uh, is a wave that's on us. It's no longer out there, it's here. And of course, COVID-19 made that very real. The good news is this is our opportunity to say we can't keep doing business as usual. This is our opportunity to say we need a different model. Uh, we need a different model in healthcare. We need a model that embraces the health of the planet. Uh, we need to start thinking, uh, if you might, I'm sorry guys, more of a matriarchal than a patriarchal uh, top-down uh, model of care. And I see Dr. Luby laughing at that. Uh, we know integrative health and medicine is the way to go. We know functional medicine, getting to the underlying cause of the problem is the way to go. We have the research that shows this. I mean, we have TM study for heaven's sakes that shows us a 48% reduction in heart attack, stroke and sudden death. Uh, that's medicine. We have um, you know, studies that show us over and over again that food is medicine. We have studies that show us that acupuncture is medicine. Uh, but what we don't have is a system that wants to give up their control of the money and the reins and recognize this. Uh, we know from Ornish's research that we can reverse coronary artery disease. I was part of that. We know we can halt prostate cancer. So I want to read a quote to the group, and I, I'm just going to lean to the side to do this, because I think 
that uh, Pope Francis has this perfectly. Pope Francis in Laudato Si says, we are not faced with two separate crises, one environmental and the other social, but rather one complex crisis, which is both social and environmental. And the same mindset that stands in the way of making radical decisions to reverse the trend of global warming, it's the same mindset that doesn't eliminate poverty, that doesn't bring health care to all, and that doesn't save the planet. So uh, we need a new level of consciousness and we need to keep doing everything that we can uh, to bring that to fruition. So I think we are at a tipping point. And I say that in my last few minutes because the World Health Organization has embraced traditional medicine strategies and they've stepped out and said that by 2023, we want all member states uh, to bring back traditional strategies such as Ayush in India uh, is doing. The UN has sustainable goals, development goals, and the number three sustainable development goal for the UN is health and well being of people. We have the uh, health uh, center services over in London calling for exactly what we're calling for health and social, uh, and health as part of the community, just not part of a building a meaningful scorecard, not just looking at a reductionist approach, take this drug and look at how it impacts you, uh, more focus on prevention, more focus on health creation than just treating disease after it happens. So we have amazing models out there and we have models that are also more ecological based. Uh, and we have small groups of people all over the world doing tremendous things. And if I could show you my slides, which I'm sorry that I can't, uh, we would talk about uh, the NUCA system in Alaska, for example. Uh, I'm just gonna give you three, three for examples, uh, which the community was sick, diabetic, um, hypertensive, heart disease. Nobody went to the hospital. The hospital didn't resonate with the people. So the people took over the hospital in South Alaska and they, uh, became stakeholders in the hospital and transformed the entire system to one where the ER visits dropped by 63%, patient satisfaction went up to 95%, a system of healthcare more in keeping with people's uh, values. The uh, food commons in Fresno, California, if you're not familiar with that, where the entire community grows food, sells food, gets to eat the food and benefits from the sale of the food that they produce, a new model of, uh, of economy. Uh, the health systems that are saying we'll have meatless Mondays, we'll source from local vendors and so on. All of these steps to me are steps in raising consciousness. And again, we will uh, never have healthy people if we don't uh, start to change the way we practice and the things that we do. At our own ashram in India, uh, we had, and these are the pictures, I'm sorry, I can't show. We went from burning coal to produce food for 10,000 people a day to solar power producing food uh, to, for 10,000 people a day to growing all of our own food on the land to plant, planting over a million trees and so on. So it is doable. So I just wanna end by encouraging everyone uh, to read Berwick's JAMA 2020 One Week Old uh, opinion piece. I hope uh, some of you have seen it. It came out about a week ago. It's called The Moral Determinants of Health. And I know this group is probably gonna believe in everything that's in there, uh, but I just wanna share what he calls for. U.S. ratification of basic human rights treaties and conventions of the international community. We, believe it or not, we are in violation of the basic human rights treaty and conventions. We do not enforce them. Uh, realization of health care is a human right. Uh, restore U.S. leadership to reverse climate change, end hunger and homelessness, and also to radically transform the U.S. justice system and to have a compassionate immigration system. Well, if all of this was to occur, uh, healthcare is a right, compassionate immigration, 
um, we would have healthy immune systems. Uh, if we were participating in uh, CSAs, if we were doing the things that we all fundamentally believe in, and we made not only healthcare a right, but integrative holistic medicine a right, where it's covered and paid for, and we focused more on creating health and less on treating disease, we stand a small chance uh, of transforming our, at least our nation, if not the world. So thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to speak here.